the god Zeus fell in love. Yes, he fell in love, for the gods can fall in love, and perhaps they do so in a deeper way than mortals will ever know. And the goddess he fell in love with, her name was Metis, and she was a god of cleverness, yes, for she could change her shape into anything she wanted to. She could become anything she wanted to be. So Zeus and the goddess Metis, they would spend time together, but she taught him her art so that he could change his shape as well. So they would meet in Olympus as god and goddess, but they would go off together and they would go off to enjoy the delights of love. But they would take different forms, yeah. They would become perhaps mare and stallion and enjoy the delights of that love there. Or they would become two wolves running wildly across a snow-covered field. Or two fish swimming in the sea, entangled in the beautiful currents of that place and in the feel of flippers and skin. Or perhaps they would become two snakes, enjoying the dry, delicious infinity of rubbing themselves over and upon each other in one tangled knot of joy, much like the brightness of a star. So they would spend time together in all these different ways, and then they would return to Olympus as god and goddess. So they were in love, yes indeed, and love was, and Zeus was killed in that battle. If you can say, if to be killed in this battle is to remember all day a glance or a look or the sound of a rippling music of someone's voice, so he was killed in that beautiful and delicious way. But the thing is, Zeus had a wandering eye. And one day he was walking through Olympus, and he came to a field, and there was a goddess standing beside a well. And her name was Hera. And she was pulling a bucket of cool, crashing water out of that well. And he could see the fire in Hera's eyes, and he could sense the coolness of that water, and he loved how her being embraced these opposites, like the radiant queen she was. And he looked at her with hungry eyes, but she looked at him, and she frowned. And she turned, and she walked away with her bucket of water. Well, Zeus turned, and he went off as well in a different direction. And later that day, he spent time with Metis, the goddess. But now, when they came together, well, she became an ostrich, and he became a dog. And then she became a crab, and he became an ant. And then she became a cat, and he became a flower, and then she became a fly, and he became a frog, and his wet, snarly tongue went zipping out of his mouth and snared her just like that and pulled her down back into his belly, and he swallowed her up, and she was gone. And then Zeus turned himself into a sparrow, and he flew across the fields and forests of Olympus back towards the palace. But there was rain in the sky that day, rain in the clouds, and it began to fall. And this rainstorm caught a Zeus, the sparrow, in this way. The raindrops filled his feathers, so he had to take shelter in a garden as the rain poured and trickled down from the sky. And he took shelter in that garden, and he saw that someone else had taken shelter there as well. And he looked, and under an oak tree there was Hera, the goddess, with the water dripping and splashing down around her and onto her shoulders and down her body. And Hera looked and saw the little sparrow, the poor bedraggled sparrow, and something opened in her heart. And she said, oh, the poor sparrow, the poor sparrow. And she reached down and she picked up that sparrow and held him up close to her breasts. And as she did that, the sparrow swelled and grew into a cat, and then into a great lion, and then into Zeus himself. And she cried out, but Zeus muffled that cry with a kiss. And then she cried out again, and he pinned her against that oak tree, and she cried out again and again. But now, whether those cries were from delight or out of joy, well, it became hard to say. And when that rainstorm was over, Zeus and Hera walked out of that garden and back to the palace of Olympus, and they walked hand in hand. And she was welcomed there. Hera and Zeus, they were welcomed there, and they were married soon after that in a marvelous ceremony that all the gods attended. And the music was played, the celestial music of the star and the earth and the fire and the air. And the words were spoken, binding them together as king and queen of this entire universe. 
and they embraced many opposites in themselves and among themselves, and they lived in that place, and they ruled wisely and well, and everything went as harmoniously as it can go for the gods and for people and for every other being in the creation. But some time later, well, Zeus heard a sound. Yeah, and the sound was tap, 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 tap. He looked around. Was Hephaestus making something? What was going on? Tap, 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 tap. Do you hear that? Nobody else heard that. Hermes looked at him. No, I don't hear anything. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, boy. He heard it. It seemed to be coming from inside his head. Oh, boy. Now, what had happened was this. When he had swallowed Metis down into his belly, when he had swallowed the fly that Metis became down into his very self, well, she was a clever goddess, you know. She found a home for herself inside Zeus, but not inside his belly, no. She went up there to his head, his mental space. She inhabited that dream thought world of Zeus's head. And the thing is, Metis, well, she was pregnant, expecting a daughter. And being a goddess, she planned ahead. Being a mother, she planned ahead. And she thought, well, my daughter, she's going to need some things. I think my daughter should have a golden helmet. So she was up there inside Zeus's head working on this helmet. Tap, 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 tap. And as work went on, she began to get more vigorous with this hammer. Bam, 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 bam. Zeus began to get horrible headaches. He began to stagger around the palace of Olympus. Oh, my head, my head, this way and that. The sound, bam, bam, bam. It kept cutting horrible headaches. And down on Earth, well, things were strange. Yeah, there was a woman there sewing beside a window of a farmhouse. At the, in the night, and as she was sewing, a green ball of lightning came and flashed around the house three times, whoop, 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 and went up into the sky and evaporated in a huge flash out there on the sea. Yeah, there was a sea captain out there. A red bolt of lightning came down, hit the mast, and there were sparks in all directions, like the laughter of some wicked stone under the earth. Strange things happened. Tornadoes at the North Pole. Sandstorms in the rainforest. It was crazy. Up there in Olympus, Zeus is staggering around. Oh, my God. Oh, my head. Oh, God. And then, all of a sudden, it stopped. Just like that. The sound stopped. There was silence in his head. Quietness. No hammering. The headaches went away. Whew, I'm glad that's over, said Zeus to himself. And the storms on Earth, they subsided. Yes, there were no cyclones at the North Pole. There were no dust storms in the rainforest anymore. Everything was fine, and the birds began to sing. And inside Zeus's head, well, Metis was there, and she had finished that golden helmet. That's a good helmet, she said. And then she thought a bit, and she said, But you know, my daughter, she needs more than a helmet. I think she needs, uh, what does she need? I think she needs a golden breastplate. Yeah, and she began to hammer once again. Bam, 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 the headaches came back. Oh, oh my head. Down on earth, strange things again. Hats went flying this way. Cows were driven across the field. Birds were blown off their pathways into the forest there. Up in Olympus, Hermes looks at Zeus. What's going on? Mr. Big Guy, boss man, what's happening? My head hurts. Fetch Hephaestus, said Hermes. Fetch Hephaestus. Now, Hephaestus. Festus, he's the blacksmith of the gods. He works there in a workshop inside an active volcano. Yeah, and in that volcano, there's some cyclopses which help him. But he heard the sound of Zeus reeling around up there. He heard what Hermes said, and he went right up there to Olympus with his hammer. He came in. Zeus is going this way and that way. And Hermes said to Hephaestus, quick, open his head. And Hephaestus said, what? He looked with dismay. What do you mean? And Hermes said, open his head. So Hephaestus took his hammer, and he wound up three times. And then he delivered a terrific blow to Zeus's head. Bam! Just like that. And his head opened up and a goddess with gray eyes jumped out and she said, Aha! I am Athena, goddess of wisdom and power. I offer you the world. And she took a sword and she banged against her breastplate three times. Bang, bang, bang. And the sound chimed and rang throughout Olympus and they went out like the ripples in a pond. And all the thrones of the gods, they chimed and rang in tune with that music of that sword against that golden breastplate. And then Athena came down to the ground elegantly, beautifully, like a dance. She walked towards an empty throne there that was still humming with the sound of that sword blows, those sword blows. And she sat down gleaming, for she was a goddess, and took her place there. And all the gods looked 
and they saw that her arrival had been foreseen and they had been awaiting for her for a long time, in fact, without even knowing it. And it seemed right for her to be there. And Zeus's head, well, it knitted itself up back together. He was a god after all, and his head was actually okay. And so life went on, and uh, Zeus and Hera ruled over the creation, and everything was as harmonious as you can imagine it possibly to be. But the thing is, every now and then, when the gods were talking, discussing something down there, they would, uh, something would happen, you know, there would be a funny thing. Zeus would say some words unlike anything he'd said before. Yes, a buzzing, whispery thought would come out of his mouth, almost like a word scribbled in the air by a fly, scribbled into the summer air by a fly. And the gods would look at him, strangely, and inside they would think to themselves, I wonder if, and do you think? But Zeus would give them an imperious look, and they would say nothing, for he was, after all, the king of the gods. Mm -hmm.